Hi, welcome to part two. Uh, bad angle. Lighting's pretty heavy, but who cares? Okay, so uh, I thought it'd be cool to get into some of the ideas that uh, we had for uh, UXW. Uh, some of the um, scripting decisions that I had, um, or that me and Jacob had, because he's definitely a co-writer of mine. Uh, best friends, good friends. And anyways, uh, uh, so, um, yeah, I thought it'd be cool. Uh, I, I treat every episode of UXW, or I treat it UXW in whole as a TV show. Uh, you know, uh, in the sense of peaks and valleys and main characters and, uh, arcs and heroes, villains and whatnot. Because, uh, wrestling, like even WWE, TNA, ECW, etc., they're not wrestling. It's a show about a wrestling show. You know what I mean? So, um, that's a Max Landis quote. Wrestling isn't wrestling. You guys should watch that. It's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, I, I look at it very much so as a TV show. Uh, and, um, you know, a mix of athlete and, and uh, actor. So, I treated uh, UXW the exact same way. So, uh... Yeah. One of the ideas that I think I wanted to talk about was the Anarchy Era. Because the Anarchy Era was supposed to be totally different from what we we did. Um, what we, um, what we did, you know? It wasn't supposed to end with uh, me and Jacob. Or at least not in that, that way. You know, there was a lot of more, there was a lot more key players in that whole story. But I thought it would be cool uh, to delve in to that. So, uh, Anarchy season was supposed to be the very last season of UXW. So, uh, it's a long string of character development from there. Uh, one of the characters, uh, is, let me see, was, uh, Perrin. So, or, excuse me, Armageddon. Armageddon was, um, yeah, I, always, I built him up as an underdog. Someone who, uh, who couldn't win for losing, couldn't, uh, you know, who could win, but people didn't believe it, you know, kind of put him on the back burner and whatnot. I've always kind of, I, I started him out as a secondary character. Uh, and uh, so, and I also did that with GTX. So, did, uh, let me see. So, one way that that so one way how the anarchy era was supposed to go was um, you know I, I call Perrin out. Um, I mentioned him in a, in a promo, and it, I was going to do this very long promo and kind of just mention him, very not even put him in in a thought, kind of just put him in a past and it's kind of like oh, no 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 no, and Perrin sucks, or excuse me, Armageddon sucks, you know. Uh, or something like that. And not even think majorly about it. I was just going to brag on myself and diss the fans. Because I was going to be a heel. I, I ended as a heel even in the real version. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so then Perrin was going to come out. And say I'm tired of my name being uh, an adjective for sucking. You know or something like that. You know. Uh, uh, call me an unfunny prick or something like that. And um. Just give me the bullshit, you know, to tell me to walk past the bullshit and just, you know, get to, get to shit and, um, and offer a match. Now, over the, the span of all those seasons, uh, I grew kind of as this cowardly heel, you know, I would cheat in matches or, or something like that. I would, um, I would, um, you know. Uh, do every heel thing I could possibly think of and be very um, uh, be a pussy <laughs> and um, and while too I was going to be very oblivious to that uh, to that fact that he is a pussy you know kind of a wimp uh, not a wimp just cowardly in a way but his ego and his narcissism is blindsiding that so he views himself as this godlike figure of someone who's always right who knows that the world is wrong he's right he knows the tricks and everything like that. Totally blindsiding himself. And But really what he is, is this cowardly um, 
someone who lacks confidence, but blind, but also has this false confidence. You know, look at that character arc right there. Not even the arc, just character depth. Uh, not a lot of wrestling has that. Uh, or can I don't know. I'm not. Why am I dissing it? Why am I dissing wrestling? Um, <laughs> so that's uh, so Lao Tzu is supposed to be this character, and Perrin or Armageddon. I, I keep calling his real name is uh, this person who is down in the dumps. He he loses a lot, and when he does win, no one gives a shit. No one makes a big deal about it. You know, it's kind of like, oh, he won. Cool. At least he got something. And he's this very angry character because he's like, I'm doing all this bullshit. I'm working hard and I'm not getting any, re uh, you know, uh, not getting a reaction out of anyone. So he finally kind of says, cut the bull crap. Let's have a match, you and me. And we finally do. Now, for the good bulk of it, I was going to kind of beat him down. Uh, or at least in the first half. And then the second half and the third half, or the second half more so, he was just going to annihilate me at least in some way uh you know just kick my ass continually and start thinking smarter start seeing my patterns in my wrestling and just get better and then um hey, while suicide notice knows he might lose this match to this underdog uh and he can't allow that to happen so he, before the match and even behind the scenes or whatever like that uh, you don't really see it, but you know it, it kind of hints to it that he built uh, that he um, kind of sets up this team, uh, two people that we never got to debut, uh, who I think we we're gonna call. There's a Celtic character in there, and then there's a character named God Elias. This big guy who's a good friend of mine named Rex uh, or Ray X. So, sorry, I paused. Um, so, Perrin's winning, and uh, he, he's, he's going to have his final blow. He's going to, uh, I'm down, and um, Perrin is getting ready for his finisher. Uh, then we were going to have the camera set up in a certain way, where, uh, you know, Perrin's standing on top of the trampoline. And it was gonna kind of get him in, in this godlike shot, so it was from the ground, from the trampoline up, so where he's, you know, barreling over me, kind of, he's about to win. This underdog is about to beat the champion, or I think, I think at the time I'm the champion, I, I forget, but he's about to beat this this guy, this uh, A-lister, in a sense, and um, and then all of a sudden. That godlike shot gets pulled, you know, gets pulled. He, he just gets pulled down. And to the to the people that I said who didn't get to make a debut at all or whatever, uh, pull pulls his legs from under him and just starts wailing on him, starts beating him up. The whole time you see wild suicide in the background of this this chaos of two people, you know, destroying him. And, uh, oh, before I continue, so before, the reason why we made the Anarchy Era is because we, I don't know if you know this, notice this, I don't know if you notice this at all, but we have a bad thing with GMs, so we can never keep a GM, so we just kind of finally said, UXW doesn't need a, a GM, and that's where the Anarchy era, era comes in. Usually if there's an interference in a match, uh, what UXW does is it's just a draw. There's no winners, there's no losers. Uh, it's just a draw. And it's a no competition. And um, that's usually what happens. UXW is a pretty ruleless era, uh, place any, anyways. But this is where it just gets out of hand. There's no rules. It's almost a 24-7 uh, championship battle, whatever. Uh, there's absolutely no rules. So, um... So anyways, so they're beating him down. They're tearing him apart. Sorry, again, I paused. People are going in and out. So they're beating him down. <laughs> they're tearing him apart. And uh, and in the background, you still see Wild Suicide just kind of looking on through all of this. Just And he's not really reacting that heavy. 
he has this kind of cold, calculated look. And after they're done beating him up, they run off, you know. And it's just wild suicide. And Armageddon. Armageddon on the ground. Wild suicide kind of broken up. And then he kind of slithers towards um, Armageddon and pins him one, two, three. He holds the title and he's kind of looking at it. Looks at Perrin, Armageddon, and kind of just gives a smile, this demented smile to the camera. And it shows how ruthless and how um, how this is just Wild Suicide's era. He's an anarchist. It's the anarchist era. This fits perfectly. Uh, and that's how episode one of the of the I think a three part season. I think it was a four part season. I can't remember. Uh, and season uh, episode episode two of season of the anarchy season comes around. Perrin is uh, broken up. He has this promo. He, he's just shit talking wild suicide. Um, now I must remind you that this episode doesn't have a match. That's kind of weird. Uh, it's just brawling. So he has this. He's kind of having. He has this promo. And he's just pissed off at Wild Suicide for reasons he has, you know, it's totally understandable why he's pissed off at Wild Suicide and, and these two mysterious figures. And he's just bullshitting and, and just kind of letting out everything. And, uh, let's see. Oh, and then uh, Wild Suicide comes out with his two goons behind him, these two nameless goons. Uh, but they have X right in the middle of their forehead now, and so does Wild Suicide. So that's stealing from Charles Manson. Uh, he was uh, so Wild Suicide has a cult now. He's um, he's becoming this kind of a cult-like figure, this dictator s figure. He's becoming everything he hates now. But yeah, I'm not going to get into that so far. I'll, I'll just wait. Um. So, he, uh, he comes out and he's kind of justifying on why he did it. Why he, um, why these two people came out and destroyed Perrin. And destroyed his precious little win that he was also going to get. Uh, and kind of just belittle him. And see himself still as, inf uh, as the inferior one. And Perrin as the, the little one. Uh, barely even a competition. In any ways, in the back of his mind, he knows Parent's a threat. I keep calling him Parent. I'm so sorry. That's the real guy's name, Parent. My good friend, Parent. Armageddon. Ugh, trying to stay in character. Um, he knows that Armageddon is actually a threat to Wild Suicide. This young talent is actually a threat. But he's not going to admit that. He's Wild Suicide. He's the one. He's the first. Um, he was the first person in a match. He's the first person to win in a UXW match. He's the first UXW champion. He's the first this and that. He's the blah, 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 ego on top of ego on top of ego and whatnot. Uh, so he's just kind of justifying on why he did this evil deed. And Perrin is like, fuck you. That's not cool. And, uh, and, uh, Watsu well, Sud had enough of seeing this tick, this this pest parent and orders those two to attack him and uh, they start to but parent is uh, Armageddon um, fights back as well as he as well as he can he, he's holding his own but for the most part two out of one he kind of lo he, he's losing then uh, right behind wild suicide obviously you see this long-haired beauty come by carnage run past me starts helping Perrin. Now that's weird, right? Perrin uh, was, uh, you know, Perrin and, uh, and uh, Carnage, I think in the past seasons, and maybe uh, even a little bit in like the second season or the first season, I could be wrong. I have this hate towards each other usually. They just, they, they're bitter towards each other. They just don't like each other. And it's just, they're not compatible. So all of a sudden he's helping him. That's weird. But, you know, who cares what, you know, Carnage doesn't care that he doesn't like Perrin. He has honestly nothing against Perrin. 
who he hates is the very person that he started with while it's suicide. So he starts attacking these two people, you know, helping Perrin out, and they both get knocked out of the ring. Uh, um, Perrin is kind of hurt. He's kind of, like, down or whatever. And uh, Carnage kind of looks over him and kind of tries to help him out. While Suicide comes in and starts attacking uh, Carnage and beating him down. And, uh, oh, uh, and uh, beats down the already broken parent. And uh, they're both kind of down. And he orders the two, uh, the two goons. I'm sorry, this part's kind of messy because I, I wrote it kind of weird. Um, but the two goons, he orders the two goons to pick Carnage up. And um, and he gets Carnage's face and just looks at him. He doesn't say anything, but he just looks at him. Grabs his head and gives him a fi his finisher. And then while he's down, while at suicide, looks over Carnage. Whose parent and Carnage are going to be the heroes of the story. And looks down at... Uh, Carnage, the hero, and Wild Suicide, the villain. Wild Suicide says, I wanted this for, I wanted this for a while. I deliver it differently, I know, in my head. <laughs> but I said, I wanted this for a while. And the video ends. So it's not even a match, it's just a brawl. Not, and uh, episode two comes around. Or episode three comes comes around. And uh, they're outnumbered, you know. There's three people and two of them. And they're tired of this. And, um, but they don't, you know. So, it's this, they, they offer a match. Uh, hold on. Let me pause for a second. Okay, back, sorry. I had to, because I kind of wrote it messy. It's all over the place. Um, so... Then they offer, they 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 issue a match. Watts, uh, not excuse me, uh, Carnage and Armageddon, saying that they they want a match. Even though that there's two of them, they want a match. They want to get their their hands on those crummy faces that they call Wild Suicide, uh, God Life, and some Celtic name that I forget the other guy's name is. Um. And this cult says yes, their ego is ahead of them. And of course, their ego is ahead of them. There's three out of two. Why, why wouldn't they win? And um, so they had this match. It's a tag team match. It's a pretty messy tag team match because since there's no referee, there's no GM, there's no rules, even though they tag, they can easily just break out into a brawl as easy as possible. It's a very messy match. Uh, but it, it, it goes back and forth. And uh, uh, it looks like Wild well, Suicide's team about, is about to win. Uh, and then who comes by? Who comes running in? Now, <laughs> this... This one, we had two alternative ways of uh, of doing this. And I'm going to tell you the, fir the first idea that we had, because I like this one just a little bit better. So, our first idea of who would run in? The Beast. Bow. His music comes out. Uh, he just starts attacking everyone. He's, uh, he's kicking ass. And... Um, and uh, Carnage Parent kicks uh, the, the Colt's ass. The Colt's name, by the way, I don't think I ever mentioned it, or I think I may have mentioned it in a promo in the script or whatever, but the team's name is the Opened Eye Society. And um, the Opened Eye Society. Uh, so anyways, um, uh, they, they start getting their asses kicked, but they, and they know they're getting their asses kicked, but they retreat. They retreat, Three of them standing in the ring. Good thing about this, uh, there's a little video that we did that's on YouTube of the Beast teaching Perrin or Armageddon, but it was Perrin at the time. He didn't have a name. 
uh, uh, teaching Armageddon some wrestling moves. So the Beast was Perrin's protege. J J uh, Jaden was Wild Suicide's protege. And I don't think, um, I think, I think Team Mitch was, or I think GTX, maybe Team Mitch, it was, oh, it was Team Mitch, um, was Carnage's protege. But uh, we didn't really, I think, I don't know, we never really explained that. I think in the past seasons, seasons we did, but we didn't explain it in this season. Anyways, um, so um, it's the protege, Perrin's old, uh, bitter enemy, kind of, and Perrin himself, this underdog figure. Two A-listers helping an underdog attack another A-lister and two other underdogs. So, finally, the match is even. The, you know, the... And, uh, Wild Suicide requests a match. He, uh... He says that... I don't think I want a triple, but, you know... A tag team triple threat match you know three on three I think I want to do things the classy way how about this my men versus your two friends parent Armageddon shit jeez um <laughs> versus your two men so you have the you have the open die society versus carnage and the beast and then the next match will be Armageddon versus Wild Suicide for the championship. And they accept. So then, um, blah, 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 blah. The, uh, the pay-per-view, which I don't think we had a name for. I think, I think it was Hardcore Hell. I forget. Um, it was... Uh, so I'm just going to say it's Hardcore Hell. Uh, Hardcore Hell comes by. That's our pay-per-view or our event. I don't know why I called it a pay-per-view. Uh, comes by. And uh, the ma those matches start. Who's victorious on Team Beast and uh, Carnage? Open Dice Society. Because they're young talent. So usually I, I usually let the young talent win. But, um, but who loses... Their match, Wild Suicide against Parent. Parent's the champion. So, the followers of Wild Suicide won, but the people that Wild Suicide, but the people that, but Wild Suicide himself, the, the self-proclaimed god, didn't win? Hmm. And that's kind of where the, the fault leads. I'm going to end it right here. And uh, yeah.